Some of the sights and sounds of the first half. Layups, dunks, but mainly it was the three ball. That was of note for both UNLV and the Utah State Aggies as we await the start of half number two. Utah State on top by 10, 46-36, as people return to their seats at Thomas and Mack Center. And what we noticed this morning was that Utah State and they told us this flat out. They were going to flex in between man-to-man -man and zone defense, and that's how they were going to make an impact on UNLV. I think it's working so far. I think it's really slowed UNLV down. Remember, this is a Rebel team that averages 89 points a game, seventh in America. They got 36 at the half. And you double that, that brings you to 72. That's a long way from 89. I think the defensive game plan by Coach Duye and his staff has worked to perfection perfection. Now let's go back to the Rebels. When they narrow the gap, they're getting inside touches. One of the things I like, I keep harping on this, when McCoy touches the ball, good things happen. One of the good things happens is when they double McCoy, then it gives juice to the free run to the offensive glass. And you see him right there on the screen. He's a great offensive rebounder. He is. And you talk about the points per game for UNLV. Number seven in the NCAA as far as points per game goes. Number 10 in field goal percentage. This is not a normal day at the office for the running rebels. No. But it's a conference game. Remember, they have eight new faces on this running rebel team. Only two men who ever played in a Mountain West Conference game before this season. That's different. It's different than playing non-conference. Now, the one thing I like is they're on defense to start. Defense starts now. Sometimes offense takes some time to warm up. So I like to be on defense to start the second half. And they're in a zone. They changed it. Those jumper is no good. Like you said, sometimes it's good. Second crack at it instead of crack number one as we're just underway. Thompson Max Center for number two. Judson's three is good. And the Park made our higher. Well, the Q is Wilson. I look at Judson's field goal percentage, 44% from the three. Guess what? I'm going to get out of Aggie's at the half. You know what? They had it a happy before. That's this true. is different. Oh, his jumper is good. And 48. Uh, yes. Clint on the dribble. Out of trouble. Here comes the double. The post. What Coy has to do when he punches it back out, he's got to bury that inside. Thank you, Luke. Punch in. I got the guy out of those. Don't stand there. Bill on Ring in the meantime gets a three. And that is a six point lead for the Aggies. Leaving. Brown unguarded. The glass in. Houston has to check down the weak side. He's going to there and take that pass away. Javon Mooring, now Jason McCoy, traveling line. Remember I said, three in the game. You got, you got a turnover on the three-second play of the half. He gets that turnover by moving his feet fast. He needs to squat down. He needs to enter. He's seven foot tall. To lower his center of gravity by Benitez. Talk to Season about his athleticism, but sometimes when you're so tall, I mean, it works faster than your body. Well, I both understand. It's not <laughs> for us to get lower than him. We start low. We start really low. Got a good one on the ground. Another three. From Utah State, this time it's around his first of the game. Well, the junior cop transfer from Northern Oklahoma doing a good job. Ooh, that's a hard ball. I can hear that over here on the yeah. hard Merrill reached down to him right away as to check him. I don't think he meant to fall that hard, but here's a dive. He kind of got it. Just he fell awkwardly yeah. on his shoulder. Stop hey. and. Stanley Hall, Dave Hall right there. You mentioned David Hall checking on players injuries earlier. He's checking on Mooring now. Well, Mooring had been a junior college All-American in South Suburban, South Chicago. He's yeah. a Chicago era guy. Guess what? Most guys come there. Talk. Yep. Played in high school actually with on Utah State. Played for a very good junior college coach, John Pagotti, who will eventually be in the Junior College Hall of Fame. Jong checks back in. Houston will take a seat. Second free throw upcoming for Mooring. Well, Jong's performance at San Jose State endeared him to Marvin Menzies a little bit. So he's getting a little more run tonight than normal. I like the, the press. Pick up the pace a little bit. See if you can force him into a turnover. Merrill escapes. Layup is up and in. The weak side of the press did not rotate back. Therefore, that allowed Merrill, who is not a speed demon, to get to the basket. Is a three. Off the rim, no good. Jong with the offensive rebound. Johnson is held up for a second. 
They let him get free, tried the bounce pass, and now we're going to get a kick on Utah State. So here you see Merrill, the run out, and Clyburn couldn't quite get to it. And at the other end, we had Mark Andre Fleury yeah. with a kick <laughs> save, right? A kick save. Kick save and a beauty. Comes in on 30 seconds. Fresh shot clock. Just underway here in the second half. Talk about kick save by Flurry. Vegas Golden Knights, number one team in the Western Conference, are back in action at home tomorrow against the New York Rangers on this air. Mooring's three is no good. Rebound down to Utah State. McEwen, his three seems to be off the marker. It is. We had a good look at that. And there's another hard foul this time. Committed by Diego Brito. And once again, Mooring takes a body check. He took a clothesline right there. Mooring thinks he's in a 10-round undercard. I mean, he's gone down. He went down harder than Ali did. I mean, he took a hit. And you're actually glad that nothing happened to the yeah. knee or the ankle on the yes. way down there because that's the, the awkward part sometimes. Well, yeah, the floor is hard, but... Football's a contact game. A collision game, excuse me. Basketball is a contact, contact game. Sport. We're not playing tiddlywinks here. Johnson. Three ball. Yes, sir. 55-47. Well, you know what I think UNLV did? They were studying Utah State in the first half, so now they're knocking down threes. Usually it's not their strong suit as Brito takes a foul on his way through the paint. The ball should be out of bounds. And it's going to be on Jovan Moray. Johnson just faces the guy up. He doesn't come to guard him. Brito doesn't come out. He rises and shoots it. Now, on this box out of bounds play, look for a screen to screener play. Well, we saw the cards that walked through earlier today. And a lot of those inbound plays actually ended up going to McHugh, and he was the one who inbounds at this time. But now he gets it handed off back to him at the top of the arc. Traveling violation. He thought he got fouled, though. He's confused. And the ball is going to go to UNLV, and they'll make a substitution as well as Shakur Justin will check back in. He's pleading his case to Eric Anderson, but you know what? Eric Anderson is the judge with the gavel. He made his decision, and it went against McEwen. <laughs> McEwen did not like the verdict from Judge Anderson. Johnson now for Justin. Sort of got caught there in the paint. Johnson won the three. Now takes the jumper instead off the back of the rim. No good. Houston brings it down. Quick. They called a jump ball. David Hall did it, I think. That was a quick whistle, but the ball's going to the Rebels. Possession, UNLV, when we come back. Welcome back to Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. UNLV is starting to close the gap on Utah State, and that's because there's 60% from three here in the second half. You start making threes, that can close the gap in a hurry, and they've spread it around with Johnson and Mooring doing the damage. And you know what? They're right at their season average of 38% right now from three-point land, so it's just about right from UNLV. Again, not the best three-point shooting team in America. They're points usually come from down low as we've been saying all night but desperate times call for some desperate measures now the result of the last half is an inbound play for the rebels sorry Houston spinning jumper close to being offensive goaltending but it's Isby who brings it back down and we haven't seen him very much because He's the proud owner of three fouls in this game. And speed crossover dribble. Got tripped up on his way to the basket. And once again, fans don't like it. Think it might be the right call. Let me see the dribble drive here. Uh, you know, that could have gone either direction. Yeah. That could have been off, didn't he? Yeah. He tried to play like the Heisman Trophy there and push him <laughs> off. And he got fouled and he traveled. So it could have been any one of three calls. That's Shakur Houston, which is third foul of the game. Inbound play now from McEwen. And, and this ball will go back to McEwen for the shot. 
When they're in that four high look, the four high look, when the ball comes in, it's going to go back to the corner to McEwen, but he picks up the offensive foul with the shoulder. His first foul of the game for McEwen. Down from Houston. Okay. Still an eight point lead for Utah State. Here's Hardy. And Utah State from the press into the 1 2 2 zone. Hardy is three for three from the field so far tonight. Johnson. Again, leads the Mountain West in assists now for Mooring. One of the alley oop. It was forced. Utah right. State takes back over. He's right into the oop, but it, he wasn't Chris Paul. <laughs> I call that the CP3 pass. You get in there and lob it yep. up, he's the best in the world. Yep. He usually doesn't try and do it against three defenders, everyone going towards the rim. Another foul here on UNLV. One of the things Merrill does very well, he's a right-handed player, but he drives left every bit as well as he goes right. It's Mooring's second foul. Screen and screen the screener for the shooter. Never screen a screener. Here's Merrill. Where's the number three? So he shoots and he misses. Well, people think the mismatch is when a big has the ball against a little. Is every bit as good a mismatch, maybe better, when the little can take a big off the bounce. And that's what happened there. Jung was guarding Merrill, and Jung couldn't come out to take him, so he had a wide open three. It didn't go in. But it's a good decision by Merrill. Hardy driving. Lays it off for Houston. One-handed slam. And the lead is now six. We talked about the length of Jong's arms. Well, Houston not only has long arms, look at the size of his hands. It's like he has a 22 shoot. He has big hands. Isby is fouled, and that was a long commit by Jong, and he's still down on the floor. Can we slow-mo the slow -mo that in the air? So Go here back we to the other end first. We coach. see the offensive score at the other end again. Watch how he holds the ball with just one hand. And it's like a P. I'm not saying he's Dr. J. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, Connor, but I hurt. Yeah, I was going to say, there's been three or four of those instances tonight where <laughs> I, it's not everyone's back up. They seem to be okay, but they're, we've just had some hard fouls and some awkward fouls tonight. And, both Jong, who's going to go take a seat, and Isby seem to be all right. Well, look at Jong's body. The young freshman of Sudan does not have a lot of junk in the trunk. No. So when he lands on his rear end, that's bone on floor. Yep. McEwen. Runner up, no good. Gets his own rebound. He's fouled on the way down by McCoy. Basket is no good. And free throw should be upcoming as McEwen gets a hand up. McEwen didn't quit on the play. That's really important. And he kept playing, and it got him back to the free throw line. <laughs> so McEwen, perfect on free throws tonight, is now five for five. Good shooters know the value of getting to the free throw line where you can't be guarded. Make it six for six. 57-49. UNLV was on a little bit of a run. You don't have to get a basket to break that run. A pair of free throws is every bit as good. Houston kicks it back out. Not where Hardy was. UNLV turns it over. No, he tried to get the Rebel fan in the front row with a hat on into the game. The guy didn't have his wrist cocked. He wasn't ready to shoot the ball. Remember we talked about homework early? Yeah. We got to talk to that fan. <laughs> I'll let you do that afterwards. Yeah, he's, hey. bi he's bigger than me. I'm not hey, talking to him. Focus up. One thing, if you are sitting courtside, you know, you got to have your head on a swivel at all times. Isby. Uncontested to the rim. Alert air traffic control at McCarran Airport. We got incoming, man. He's flushing that thing. He banged that home. And it's easy when you just have a clear path to the basket, isn't See, it? The help side defense wasn't where it should be. 
People don't realize when you're playing man to man, it's not one on one. It's still five against the ball. Right. Because I'm not very smart. The guy with the ball can score. The other guys can't score. You've got to focus on stopping the ball. McCoy can't get the ball back. He does this time. And put some energy back into the crowd here at Thomas and Mack. Eight point lead for Utah State. A little dribble weave, old school action here on the perimeter. Notice five out, nobody in, and there's the three. No good from McEwen, rebound down from McCoy. Now the running Rebels want to run. Johnson to the rim, he's fouled on the way through. If you're a guard, you have the ball in your hands, you need to know when to push it and when to pull it back. Push or pull. He saw the seam to the basket, he had a little edge, so he pushed it and he's shooting a pair of free throws. Smart decision by the senior guard. Johnson right now. His first free throws of the game is so for Utah State is gonna have to wait to come in. That's Abel Porter who hasn't seen action yet tonight. Yeah, earlier in the year, Porter started four ball games. Yeah. So even though he doesn't play great minutes, he has been on the court. And with their lack of depth, they've got to be able to find somebody. I call these guys middle relievers. Yeah. They come in and just eat up a few innings. You've got to eat up a few minutes. <laughs> Abel Porter out there giving a little bit of respite. 36.4% from the floor. Now, if I'm the Rebels, I'm pressing up on Abel Porter. He, he's second string for a reason. I'm going to get in his grill. We got a trap here. A cold touch on the ball too. Brown Jr. through the paint. Tomahawk jam does not go. Fast break time for Mooring, and the Rebels got to make this one count. Jong met him at the apex of his jump and forced him right back down. Mooring's three is no good, and that's ambitious from Jovan Mooring. Ambitious is right. You said ambition, I'd say bad decision. <laughs> trying to be and nice. Ambitious is a euphemism for a bad decision. <laughs> Both speaking the same language. Not the way I would have on the bench. It would have been an X-rated comment. <laughs> Welcome to live television. Rebels get the ball back. You can hear Thomas and Max Center behind us. Johnson. Houston. Four-point ball game. 6-0 run for the Rebels. I'm going to get in the able corner. I'm going to make corner make a hard decision. Brown Jr. to the basket. Fouled on his way through. Out of bounds. He's helped up. Free throws coming in a moment, but it's the running Rebels. Johnston leading the rush up the floor. 59-55. College basketball on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Dodge Ram. Guts, glory, Ram. Well, the band in full voice, and there's more reason to celebrate now for UNLV because they've cut the lead. Dave Bowwinkle to just four points. It's 59-55. We got what we thought we'd have. A good ball game. Yeah. We knew that on paper, UNLV had the edge. But we said the game's not played on paper. It's played on wood. And let's give Tim Durier and the Aggies all the credit in the world. They played smart, they played hard, and in the first half they made their threes, but the second half only one for five from beyond the arc. So they need to pick that back up if they're gonna maintain the lead because that's how they got it in the first half. Aggies in the second half shooting five for 12 from the floor. That's 41.7%. They've only made one three in the second half. They made six and half number one. They made all their free throws, all of two, as they try and rebound and come out of the huddle with 11.27 to go in the second half. And they'll go to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. You and I thought, both thought this would be a common foul, the ball out of bounds. Yeah. But uh, Gordon Gottschall thought different, and he's the one with the whistle, not you and me. That is for darn sure. That happened a lot when I was coaching. <laughs> so if you're, you know, if you're, uh, did you, were, were you a big yeller as a coach? Oh yeah, I was a human hemorrhoid. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I never got run, I never got thrown out of a game in nine years as a head coach. And 
I only got two technicals I didn't want because I knew how to push hard. Right, and then, and then the back guy, off. When he said, Coach, I, I had enough. I heard you. OK, you heard me. I'll sit down and shut up. The next thing is, every game, each of my assistants had a mandate for me. Once a half, they had to tell me to sit down and shut up. <laughs> they had carte blanche any time right. they wanted to. Those are good assistant coaches. Here's Brown Jr. from the free throw line. First attempt is good. My father used to say, David, I loved watching you play. I hate watching you coach. You make such an ass out of yourself. <laughs> Second free throw is good as well from Brown Jr. And now he's two for two on the second half. A little more pressure out here. He's here trying to keep the ball away from Houston. Good things happen when he can drive the ball from up high. Johnson running the show for UNLV, and he draws the foul on Brown Jr. Well, when Brown stepped out to blitz the ball screen, blitz is a euphemism, or excuse me, is another word for trapping. Yes. When he stepped out, Johnson was very smart. He lowered his shoulder and forced Brown into the foul. I didn't like that possession, how it started. Too much standing around, too much dribbling. Yeah. I differentiate between a bounce and a dribble. A dribble takes you someplace and makes things happen. Yeah. A bounce is so your girlfriend knows you got the ball. <laughs> Stop bouncing, start dribbling and passing. That's a good pass. Good dunk as well from McCoy. Well, McCoy did a good job of spreading out big in the post, giving a good hand target, and Johnson put it right on the open hand. 13 points on the night for Brandon McCoy. Now it's defense time for UNLV as Merrill loses the basketball. McCoy again in the paint, fouled on the way through. Nice pass to the post right there, turns to the inside. The defense has to jump over on the inside shoulder. And then look at the other end here, if we, if we catch it. Between the free throws, we'll see Brandon McCoy run on the floor. All coaches want Big's little run. You call it rim running. He's running to the rim. And you need to, you need to repay them for that effort, and the guards did by getting the ball to McCoy. Now watch him. I don't know where to pick it. Look at this. He's watching here, number 44. He gets on his high horse. Now, I'm not saying he's say he is. I'm saying bolt. But for a big, he can cover some ground. Brown Jr. will take a seat for Utah State as McCoy goes back to the free throw line. Two for three so far. Make it three for four. UNLV on a 10-2 run right now. And they're within two points. And the fans at Thomas and Mack Center can feel it. Now what McCoy needs to do is repay the guards and pass the ball to him by providing some rim protection. Isby driving to the basket. No good. Rebound down for Johnson. Kick out. Hardy thought about the three, slowing things down. Fans want the pace to be kept back up, though. Hardy shouldn't bring it all the way out like that because that gives the defense a chance to get organized. He might not have a shot, but pass it quickly. Get something moving. Hardy through. Lays it up for McCoy. There's a free bucket for Abel Porter. And Utah State regains the lead 63-61. But the Aggies had a 15-point lead at one point in this game. One of the things that's taken its toll on the Aggies, we talk about their injuries and lack of depth. That means they get tired. They're, they may be fading a little bit in the second half. Mooring, an air ball. It's a pass right down low. That's what Morning's been arguing. I beg your pardon. It was a wonderful pass. So here's a nice pass. Wrap around by Hardy and the throwdown by McCoy. The air ball and Johnny on the spot is Houston to get a three-point chance. You mean pass, not air ball. 
<laughs> he shot that for 18 and went 22. Houston at the free throw line. We're tied up at 63 apiece with 9.06 to go. Now, the good news for the Aggies, Houston's only 50% at the free throw line. And he made a liar out of it. He switched it. And the Rebels got the lead. Been a long time, right? Sure has. The last lead, they were up 10 to 9. 12.59 in the first half. Merrill spinning to the corner. Porter loses the handle on it, turns the ball over. Hardy, layup is good. He needs a timeout. Utah State needs a timeout. Tim Duryea, a smart coach, he's taking it right now. Timeout, Aggies. It's a Thomas and Mack attack. Three-point lead for UNLV. We'll be back to Vegas after this. Welcome back to a very loud Thomas and Mack Center. UNLV has regained the lead 66-63. And tonight's turning point of the game brought to you by Toyota. A 17-4 run for the Rebels. And most of it's because they went inside. Remember, this is a team that scores 50%, 57% of their points on twos, mostly in the paint. They got the ball in, and getting the ball inside has got them the lead. Big plays all over the place. You think of Houston back early in that first half. That dunk down low on the pass from Hardy. And in the first half, Dave Bullwinkle, you and I could hear each other very clearly right now. It's a struggle as Thomas and Max Center has come alive, and that's a good thing. What'd you say? What? Yeah, Excuse gotten, me, I couldn't hear you. It has gotten raucous in here. <laughs> it's like old times. It's like old times at UNLV. One of the Five winningest programs in NCAA history behind Kentucky, UNC, Kansas, and Duke. Merrill thought about the three. Almost went two feet in the air. Hardy's doing a good job defensively on him, taking the shot away from him. Three on three defense. Three from Merrill is good. That's a good way to put a piece of tape over the mouth of Thomas and Max Center. Lined up at 66. McCoy. Jumper up the glass is good. He was trying to get to his left hand. For a right-handed player, he's got a very good left hand, but the double came from that side. They pinched him, and he squeezed it in between. Brown Jr. almost with a carry. Hands it off from McEwen. Bounce pass behind the back for Taylor, who's back on the floor. If His remember, layup is up and in. If you remember, that's the very way we started the first half with Taylor on a drive. When McCoy had to close out on him, but he's too high in his closeout, Taylor takes him off the bounce. Johnson does his own version of the Heisman. Houston. Rebound McEwen. Quinn Taylor shaken up behind the play. Excuse me, that's Merrill. He's all right. Gets the ball now. Threw everybody off the glass and in. Now he's really all right. Nothing makes you feel better than a basket. Kind of all right before, definitely all right now. 68-70, Utah State back on top. Double high ball screen. They look to go high-low off it, and they got it into the big fella. Good job finding his own rebound. When you shoot and miss, nobody knows more where that ball's going to go than you do. McCoy followed the center of the ball, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Six minutes, 49 seconds to go in the second. Merrill has the Aggies back on top by two. Welcome back to Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas. UNLV has crawled back into this. They had the lead a couple moments ago. But then Sam Merrill happened. He's leading in points tonight for Utah State. Rebounds and assists is the number three in blue. What else is new? That's what he does all year long. I mean, they've got a great pair of sophomore guards with McEwen and Merrill. And they're leading them tonight as they usually do. Leader for UNLV in points is McCoy. He also leads some rebounds with seven, 19 points for the big man who's at the free throw line right now. Well, he's on his way to his 11th double-double. And again, there's a double-double that can be ordered in and out on campus just around the corner, but 
Why go there when you go get Tom one right here? At Thomas and Mac, yeah. <laughs> That's your line that I completely stole. Remember I said the first half or halftime that water finds its natural level, yeah. field goal percentage, what's happened? The Rebels are shooting 58% in the second half, yep. okay, after shooting 44 in the first. Remember, this is a team that field goal percentage is number 10 in America. That percentage was going to get back to where it belongs. Brito, 24 versus 24. Hands it off for McEwen. But the 24 in blue should go down in the post a little bit and use the size against Jordan Johnson. Does Been a very good job of using that uh, high ball screen and playing with it. Mer Sam Merrill does. Merrill. Lieutenant. Taken away from him. Gets it for McEwen now. McEwen, 20 seconds on the shot clock. McEwen guarded well by Clyburn. Clyburn did a great job defensively Wednesday on Ryan Wellage from uh, San Jose State. He's a good defensive player, and that's part of the reason McEwen's had a hard time on certain possessions. Double high ball screen, looking to go high-low. That's where McCoy's got to post up hard after he punches it out. Johnson wards it off. Now for Clyburn. Trying to make two moves through. Can't get through the gauntlet. Now here comes Brown Jr. for the Aggies. Merrill. Taylor. Three. In and out. Even though he's a big, he's a capable three-point shooter. Johnson for three, also no good. Sometimes they shoot that too quick and forget where the bread is buttered. Number 10 and number 44 inside. Sometimes the best time to take that three is when you're on the break because they're not thinking to defend from outside as McEwen's attempt is up and in. But that time you're right. UNLV needs to stick to being UNLV. Two-point lead now for the Aggies. Hardy. Had a tough time handling it for a moment. Too Gets much dribbling, not enough ball movement. Hardy off the glass, and that attempt is no good. Brito, all alone. Four-point lead now for Utah State. So if Hardy takes the ball in the basket, the guard on the other side, Johnson has to re rotate back. So you have defensive coverage and de good defensive transition. They did not. They gave up the layup. Johnson all by himself. <laughs> now McEwen trying to answer back for Utah State. Four minutes to go in the second half. 18 seconds on the shot clock. McEwen, guarded by Clyburn. McEwen runs over Clyburn, no call, off the glass and in. And once again, the fans of Thomas and Mack are booing. Are you a NASCAR fan? On occasion. If rubbing is racing, bumping is basketball. <laughs> Sometimes it's going to happen, there's no call. That just took place here. We got a timeout. There's a timeout taken by Marvin Menzies. We'll take a timeout as well. Utah State back up by four with 3.38 to go here in half number two. Welcome back to Thomas and Mac. We've had a ball game breakout. The Rebels are down four, but I'll tell you what, they've stayed in the game a lot because of Jordan Johnson, the fifth year senior from Waukegan, Illinois. I say amongst the players in America, under six foot tall, he's one of the best. You can see how he matches up with some other great ones. And here you can see what he does. He takes the ball to the cup. He knocks down threes. He drops dimes. He's an all around guard. A good guard. Good guards do everything. He's a guard guard. Getting into the paint as well. UNLV has 38 points in the paint tonight. Off the bench, Utah State has the advantage with 20. Johnson, of course, the perimeter player, guy who runs the show. Sometimes you just got to take things over and do things yourself. One of the things that the Aggies have done well as guard without fouling. UNLV 
on the average, gets the free throw line 29 times a game. They've only been there 15. Part of that's because the Aggies have played smart on defense. Now they're back in the zone out of the timeout. Nine team fouls at the moment for Utah State, six for UNLV. Three and a half to go, 16 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson tries to repeat the performance from the last time down the court. And he does just that. Two point ball game once again, McEwen. Narrow. McEwen, good mismatch. Matched up, he wants to score over Johnson. He should have taken advantage of that. He was too unselfish. Brito escapes. McEwen. Narrow. Thought about the three. Two seconds. One second. Three is no good. Rebound. Comes down for Johnson, and now he's away. Numbers. We're tied up again at 76. McEwen for Taylor between his legs. Mooring comes it up for Johnson. That's no help going down the court, though. First team to the floor gets the ball. That was Mooring. Great job by Mooring digging out the loose ball on the deck. Johnson's just going to slow things down now as we approach two to go. Down low for McCoy. No problem for 44. Two-point lead for the running Rebels. Now what you're doing at Tim Duryea, you got to go through your guard. Your best players are McEwen and Merrill. Now you get them a shot, and you start them one. Screen the screener, three. Coach looked into your crystal ball. You called it a mile away. Yes, yes. Merrill, yet another three. And that's 20 points on the night for Sam Merrill. Fiber back up top. Johnson for three. No good. Rebound down for Sam Merrill. Up only one. Utah State can't play the clock right now. They're still playing the team in this gray uniform. Clock is at 106. Shot clock at 16. Merrill pushes off. Off of Brown Jr. Can't foul late in the shot clock. Must defensive rebound. McEwen from long range, and it's good. And he puts his fingers to the lips, telling the crowd to hush. Justin did, Justin did a great job in the closeout. He had his hand right in his grill. Some guys, times guys just make great shots. And that was McEwen. Long three by Clyburn and there's no good rebound. McCoy can't get to it. Brito for McEwen. All by himself. Gets around Mooring. Acrobatic attempt. McEwen wanted the foul. Not going to get it. Again, bad defensive balance. Mooring trying to draw the four-point play. Now you have to foul immediately. You can't wait. Houston listens to the coach, and it's a foul and a four-point lead for Utah State with 17.7 seconds left. This is not where the running Rebels thought they were going to be three minutes ago. Free throws now for McEwen. Now, Tim Duryea is doing something I don't like right now. He's got all his blue jerseys back. See, my man up here, McEwen, he's naked. There's nobody there with him. I want a teammate next to him, at least on the first free throw. Maybe yeah. move him back in the second. Sure. He wants some buddies in this world. Up five, 17 seconds. Remember, whether you shoot a three or two is dependent upon if the differential is divisible by three. Down five, get the two and play the extendo game. If you're down six, then you look for the three. McEwen still perfect on the night from the free throw line. And that's a 9-0 run now, including free throws from Utah State. 15, 13 seconds left now. But they're taking too much time trying to get the shot. Hardy for three, no good rebound. Down for Brown Jr. And now Clyburn will be the sacrificial lamb.
4.9 seconds left in the second. The lead is back to six for the Aggies. And so we got my man Brown going to the free throw line. You're a baseball guy. He wants to be the closer. Yeah. He does not want to pull a Kenley Jansen <laughs> and blow the save in the bottom of the night. You're a sports fan. It's amazing. Brown Jr., his free throw is good. The this is, is a seven. huge win yes. for the Aggies yes. and a bad loss for the running Rebels. But I really think a lot of it has to do with the fact the Rebels have so little Mountain West Conference experience right. under their belt. Like you said, two players coming into tonight or coming into this conference schedule had played Mountain West games before. And now UNLV, who led 78-76 Utah State, went on a 9-0 run, and they are 85-78 winners over the UNLV running Rebels who have now lost back-to-back -back conference games at home, and you're not going to get anywhere in the table if you do that. No, to be a good team, to contend for the conference championship, you have to win at home and win at home and on the road beat the people you should beat. The problem right now is they haven't won at home. Going into that timeout, you're talking about 36.4% from three-point line, 52.7% from the floor for Utah State. That 9-0 run, that's almost, that's way above 55%. That's a pretty good half for the Aggies. Well, and, and they, they got the lead in the first half. They had the benefit in the first half of shooting the three well. Remember the play at the end of the first half? They were up two, you and a, they, excuse me, they are up eight. And they went to the free throw line and made two free throws to get it back to 10. That double digit is a psychological advantage for him. Right now, you see Coach Durier there. He looks a little bit like Jimmy Valvano looking for somebody to hug. <laughs> that happened, of course, in Albuquerque, another Mountain West venue. But we look at the Mako game summary now, and the picture is painted, and it's not a good picture for the UNLV running Rebels. 57% from the floor for Utah State. 48% in the second half. And again, second half field goals are good, but it's nine rebounds from McCoy. He seemed like the only guy who was getting glass in that second half at times. Right. He, he carried him, and I just, like I said, he needs more touches. They need to remember to feed and water those big guys down low. I think the other thing is the defense of the three-point line. This is a UNLV team, one of the better defensive teams in America at the three-point line and didn't do a good enough job tonight. We talked about the duel of Merrill and McEwen for Utah State early. It's like we were looking into the future because they made a difference down the stretch. They made the big baskets when it counted. And what did we say? If you're a Coach Durier, you got to go to your best players. You go home with a dance with who you brought to the dance. You brought them to the dance. That's who you finish off with. And they did. That the big three by McEwen. Uh, by Merrill and the really tough three made by McEwen when Houston had the hand in the face. McEwen goes eight for eight from the free throw line, one for seven from three point land, six for 16 from field goals. But it was Sam Merrill who led the team in points, rebounds, and assists tonight. And he doesn't really look like a guy who can make a difference, but he does on a nightly basis. No, he doesn't look like a great athlete. He's not a great athlete. What I said to you the day of the walkthrough, he's deceptively slow but he knows how to use it. He's got a little uh, shake and bake to his game. And the biggest thing is, he's such a good shooter that you have to honor him wherever he is, and that makes him quicker. Think Larry Bird. Yeah. Larry Bird wasn't to have a quick first step, but if you have a good shot, people got to close out hard on you, it makes you quicker. So if you're UNLV, where do you go from here? Well, you got to regroup. You got to go to Air Force. Not an easy place to yeah. play. Air Force is not a real good team, but you got to go to play at altitude in a building that would have anybody in it, all right, unfortunately. Dave Filipovich's team always plays hard. They're smart. They're a smart team. You've got to suck it up and understand just because you lost two at home doesn't mean you're out of the race. Well, tonight is about a celebration for Utah State, who win for the first time against UNLV in a long time. Final score, it's 78-85 for Dave Bowenwinkle and our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew. I'm Connor McGee saying good night from Las Vegas. Once again, final score is 85-78. Thanks for watching College Hoops on AT&T Sportsnet, your home for Mountain West basketball. Good night from Vegas. I'm coming for you. You know Rich Eisen?